crossroads. They are there for all of us. We may move along from day to day easily, walking in the sunshine, enjoying the view, feeling at peace. And then it comes. A crossroads. A checkpoint. A choice point. There we stand, frozen on the spot. Which way now? Right? Left? Straight? What weights down each of those choices? Which way does our heart call us to go? Which makes sense? Which is God's way? The answers aren't easy. A crossroads can be can bring daunting spiritual pain. And it can bring us to our knees. It can even bring us to destruction. Today we have an expert on the crossroads of temptation. We're going to interview the one who has become identified with the sin of betrayal. His name is a watchword for the failure of loyalty, failure of will, failure itself. We are going to interview Judas Iscariot. <laughs> Welcome, Judas. I know this must be difficult for you, but we hope to understand you better. Can you tell us something about yourself? Tell you? <laughs> Why should I tell you? You know all about me. Everyone knows about me. My name is spoken of too often, and it is always with condemnation. We know. We, we know the story. But we, we want to understand. It seems amazing to us that you would betray Jesus for a few pieces of silver, even when you were warned. How could that have happened? You know, when I look back on that night in the upper room and in the garden, I asked myself the same question, but by then I had already decided to take the money and betray Jesus. I had already gotten to the crossroad and made the choice, and the choice turned out to be a disaster. But didn't you know that it would turn out that way? Didn't you know that betraying Jesus would lead to his arrest and even his death? If you knew that, how could you do it? It all seems too easy to you. Cut and dry when you read the story. But it, it, there was more to it. I, I really didn't know it would turn out that way. I made the choice to accept the money. I needed the money. And Jesus kept promising that he was going to set up a kingdom and that he, we would be rewarded. I wanted to be there when the rewards came. But it was taking so long. And he kept talking about suffering and dying. I didn't need that. I needed money. But how, how could you make that choice? I had convinced myself, or Satan had convinced me, that, that it wouldn't be so bad. After all, Jesus wasn't exactly hiding. He rode into Jerusalem in a grand procession, appeared in the temple and on the streets. What would my marking him do? He could escape easily. He had done it before. My act was nothing. I thought he would just disappear through the crowd as he had in the past. But why? Was the money so important? It seemed like it at the time. All that silver, it's a lot of money. And I thought I might be doing Jesus a favor and getting him in a place where he could begin the revolution that would overcome the Romans and start his new kingdom. I thought I was doing the right thing. At least that is what Satan was whispering to me. You thought that the betrayal would turn out for the good. That is what I was, what I convinced myself. Listen, everyone thinks they understand how Satan works. That he is kind of there trying to get us to do bad things. Not true. Much more, he is trying to make us believe that the evil that lies before us at the crossroad is actually good that it will all work out for the good. He is not just trying to make us do wrong, but to think wrong. We thought temptation was to sin. What are you telling us? 
Every sin starts with a twisted thought. Look at Jesus when he was tempted by Satan. Those things that Satan was trying to get Jesus to do were, were not wrong in themselves. Jesus could have turned stones to bread and, and not have sinned. But Satan was tempting him like he tempts us. If you are the Son of God, if you really are, you can use your power for yourself. Sin starts in the mind, in the will, in the choice. But we, we are not like Jesus, or even like you. Our choices are simpler, more day to day. We don't betray Jesus. No. A businessman faces a choice to cut the quality of his products. No one will be hurt, he thinks. He is just doing good business, and he makes the choice. He convinces himself that what he is doing is not wrong. Or someone says that getting back at another person who has caused hurt is a good thing to do. It will teach them a lesson, we think. The sin begins in the thoughts that lead us to excuse our bad choices, to justify what we are doing. And then we find ourselves down the wrong road, in the middle of the terrible outcome of our choice. And then... And, and then? Well, for me it was too late. When I realized what the outcome of my choice was, when I saw Jesus arrested and condemned, I could not face myself, my future, my God. But for you, when you find yourselves down the wrong road, facing the consequences of your choice, then is the time to turn back. Repent. Turn around. Turn away from the bad choice. Turn to the one to whom you have betrayed. Why didn't you do that? I, I thought my sin was unforgivable. I had betrayed the chosen one of God. I thought it was too late for me. But it is never too late never too late to turn. If you learn anything from me, it should be this. No matter what the sin, no matter the terrible outcome of your choice, no matter how great the disaster, it is never too late. It is never too late to come to the cross, come to the broken Savior, come to the empty tomb, and be made whole. Even, even when the sin is a mountain, even when the pain is so deep it cannot be spoken, even when the separation from God seems too far, when the damage seems too severe, it is never too late. You can be assured that these words are true. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us all from all unrighteousness. That's all. All of it. Everything. I wish I had turned. Thank you, Judas, for your good words. We did not expect to hear them from you, but we've learned from you that we can always turn to our Lord and receive his forgiveness. Today we begin our Lenten series called Life at the Crossroads. During this season of Lent, we will be looking at some of the choices that different biblical characters have made. Sometimes it's obvious why the characters made their choice, but sometimes it is not so obvious. Today we look at the character Judas of Iscariot the man who betrayed Jesus to the authorities who were trying to find and arrest him. It is easy to stand back and totally condemn Judas for his betrayal of Jesus. We stand here some 2,000 years later, and it seems obvious how misguided Judas was and how wrong. The Gospel of John clearly states that Satan enters Judas after Jesus tells Judas to do what he is going to do. 
It is easy to stand back and roundly condemn those whom you see as totally evil. And yet, it is helpful to look a little closer at why people do what they do. And in this way, you can learn from their errors. Or perhaps you may learn that things are not so cut and dried as they may seem at first. So let's take a closer look at Judas. The Gospel of John paints Judas as clearly greedy. Judas is in charge of the disciples' treasury, and at one point even questions why the lady wastes an expensive jar of ointment to anoint Jesus' feet. That is also in the Gospel of John. But in the Gospel of Matthew, and in the book of Acts, Judas kills himself when he sees Jesus executed. And so, some scholars have suggested that Judas was actually trying to force Jesus' hand. That Judas wanted Jesus to rise up and lead the Jewish zealots to overthrow the Roman occupiers. That Judas wanted Jesus to become king right now. But, obviously, Judas' plan to force Jesus into action failed miserably and in fact caused Jesus' execution. Then there is another understanding of Judas' action. It was necessary that someone would betray Jesus, so that Jesus' destiny would be fulfilled, that Jesus would be executed, die, and be resurrected. And unfortunately for him, Judas became the instrument that God uses to complete that plan. The book of Acts clearly states this position. Indeed, even in our scripture today, Jesus is telling Judas to go ahead and do what he is going to do. Jesus could have stopped Judas, but he doesn't. So now we have a much more complex question of why Judas betrayed Jesus. Was it simply out of greed? Did Judas betray Jesus in order to force Jesus' hand? Was Judas simply frustrated? And in the end, was Judas simply a necessary tool of God? Much like when God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Did he have a choice? So we do not know the motivation of Judas. The scriptures do not give us a clear understanding of this. It seems unlikely that Judas fully realized the final outcome that his choice would lead to. And so, in a way, you and I are much like Judas. At different times in your life, you may be filled with different emotions. At one time, you might be aroused by passion for a girl or a guy, and you do something really stupid. Maybe you drive too fast, or you get into a fight, or... Maybe you have sex with someone that you had no intention of marrying. Each of these actions can have consequences far beyond what you expected. You could fly off the road in your car and kill your passenger or yourself. You could end up seriously injuring someone in a fight and going to jail. Or you could end up pregnant and trapped in a relationship that you had no desire for. Or maybe, maybe you are feeling particularly irritated at work one day. Things at home are irritating you. 
your brother deeply hurt your feelings, maybe your boyfriend or girlfriend just broke up with you, and you see this co-worker sleeping on the job, or having a personal conversation on the phone, and instead of letting it go, like you normally would, you go tell the boss. And the boss fires the person. And then you realize that coworker really wasn't that bad. And she was a single mother who had two children to take care of. And so what happened to be an irritable moment for you just turned her life into a major, terrible crisis. Judas Iscariot may have betrayed Jesus for any number of reasons that we do not know. He may even have thought he was doing the right thing. And yet, in the end, he created a situation that he deeply regretted. You can stand back and, and judge him for his stupidity, or you can pause a moment and realize that sometimes any of us can do the wrong thing out of greed, out of spite, out of lust. You might even think that you are doing a good thing and only later find that the decision was a major mistake. One of the things that you and I can learn from Judas Iscariot is that things don't always turn out like you thought they would. You can learn a little humility and take a little caution when you are quick to judge someone. Maybe that co-worker talking on the phone was setting up childcare because she was going to have to work an extra shift or fell asleep because she was exhausted staying up with her child the night before. Maybe that guy who cut you off in traffic was so filled with rage because he can't find a job to support his family. You don't always know why people make bad choices. But you can do your best to be understanding and to forgive because in the end you probably need a little forgiveness as well in the name of Jesus.